Hello everyone, uh, I'm Mohamed Zaman Zamani and here I'm going to present our paper Contrastive Lexical Diffusion Coefficient Quantifying the Stickiness of the Ordinary This is a work with my supervisor Andy Schwartz uh, at Stony Brook University The main motivation of this paper is to study language change over social networks which is called language diffusion almost all language diffusion models are binary based due to the analogy to human disease infection which are good for identifying newly introduced terms but we want to study everyday language or what we call ordinary language and for, for that purpose we present a frequency based uh, diffusion model unlike many previous studies we do not rely on the structure of the network as the driver as a main driver of the language diffusion we are going to examine if different lexical units, here cluster of words, have different probability of spreading among friends. Or in other words, we want to see if friends' language uh, will affect our language over time through friendship uh, network. And what kind of language is more prone to spread over friendship communication? Uh, we call this property of lexical phenomena as lexical stickiness and uh, present our method name contrastive lexical diffusion uh, CLD to measure that. First let's see how ordinary language is different to new introduced language. Looking at uh, word usage distribution which is a Ziffian uh, like distribution, the tail of the distribution is the language that we rarely use in our daily language and the head of this distribution is our everyday language. Uh, this is the ordinary language. If a term moves from the rare language to ordinary language, it will be considered as a lexical emergence or new introduced language. While binary models are good uh, for lexical emergence, they are not presented to capture the change in usage frequency. So frequency-based models are needed for ordinary language study. Here we are seeing an example of lexical diffusion and stickiness. In these two examples, we see tweets from two users who are following each other. Uh, here, talking about charity, orange terms, or att attending meetings, uh, the green terms, already exist in both users' uh, vocabulary, but with different usage frequencies. And the difference uh, in usage frequency will propagate across social network connection. For instance, user A, who was not talking about meeting, starts to talk about it, uh, same for user B who talks more about donation since user A uh, was uh, talking about it a lot. However, uh, talking about current happening, like the blue terms like today and tomorrow, are common but do not seem to, to spread. In this example, donation and meeting are among sticky language while today and tomorrow are non uh, sticky. To perform this study, we need a dataset that contains both network and language. We crawled Twitter, starting from three uh, seed users. Uh, we collected all their reciprocal friends at the maximum distance of two uh, that forms our 4,000 uh, core users. Then we went one more hop uh, ahead to collect about 170,000 of uh, all users of interest. For those 4,000 users, we got all the reciprocal friendship network and for those 170,000 uh, all users, we got their tweets from 2013 to, and to the end of 2018. Uh, we limit our users' uh, friends to 500 and their tweets to, to 1,000 in order to stop celebrities or bots to overtake the network. To present language, we build a vector representation. To do that, we extracted uh, user level one gram, uh, one gram over a period of time. Then we exploit pre-existing set of 2,000 social media clusters extracted using LDA. That gave us a topic representation of each user's language over that specific uh, period of time. Uh, then, in order to make sure that we are dealing with ordinary language, we uh, limit ourselves to the most uh, to the 500 most common topics. So at the end, the uh, uh, users' language are represented by uh, 500 dimension vectors of topics. To work on language change, we need language at different time spans. So we split our dataset into two time spans at 2017 into past and current. 
and we calculated three uh, language vectors uh, as follows. The uh, first one is individual's language change, which is each person's own language at current time span minus uh, their language in the past time span, uh, named uh, with delta L. Then is the potential language force from friends, which is average of their friends' uh, language in the past minus their own language in the past. Uh, we call it delta F. And uh, finally, uh, average population's language force, um, which is average population language in current time span uh, minus their own language in the past time span. And we call it delta P. We want to find out how much each lexical unit in uh, individual's language diverges from average population towards their friend's language. Uh, the more it diverges from the population's vector and closer it gets to friend's force, uh, the stickier it would be on friendship communication. So having these three vectors, we calculate the stickiness of lexical units, or CLD, as the cosine similarity of delta F with delta L minus cosine similarity of delta P with delta L. The smaller the angle between delta F and delta L, the higher stickiness, and the smaller angle between delta P and delta L means lower stickiness. Here is a two example of sticky and non-sticky lexical units. The left one represents a sticky lexical unit where uh, the angle between delta F and delta L is smaller than the angle between delta P and delta L. So the stickiness score would be positive. The right one is a non-sticky lexical unit. The, the delta P delta L angle is a smaller than the delta F delta L angle and the stickiness score is negative. Now let's jump into the experiments. Totally we conducted seven experiments on CLD coefficients. Four of them are for validation purpose where we consider the predictive validity and reliability of the CLD coefficients over tweet level tasks like uh, to predict the number of likes and number of retweets, uh, user level tasks to predict the friendship connection, and a lexeme level task to compare uh, the human judgment of diffusion and also an assessment of the stability of the coefficient as a lexical property by comparing its calculation over uh, two independent uh, training sets of users, uh, network, and their tweets. We also performed another uh, three exploratory experiments to demonstrate how we can use the CLD coefficient to gain insight about other phenomena. First, uh, we see how uh, CLD coefficient is correlated to human personality. Then we look at the f a few sticky and non-sticky topics to see what type of language is diffusing, diffusing uh, among friends. And finally, we explore the CLD coefficient of Luke's word category. Our tweet level task is like and retweet prediction. Likes and retweet are two measures that show how tweets spread. Uh, so we would like to see how good we can predict the that using stickiness of the words in the tweet. The values here are disattenuated person R uh, for predicting number of likes, retweet, and spread of tweet. Uh, we define spread as normalized sum of the number of likes and retweet. Uh, we compare the stickiness of the tweets with two baselines here. Uh, sentiment, the absolute value of the sentiment score, and lexical emergence score of tweet. We performed this experiment uh, on 30,000 tweets, and here we can see that the CLD uh, Pearson R is significantly better than both uh, baseline in all three tasks. Our user level task is predicting the friendship communication. This is a binary task. For each user, we got one friend and one stranger, and we look at the similarity of his language uh, to their friend versus the stranger. The pair that got higher similarity, we choose as uh, the friends pair. To calculate such similarity, we use weighted jacquard uh, coefficient over the top k topics. And here is the result of selecting top k topics with uh, sorted CLD uh, lexical emergence and sentiment, as well as their reverse ordering. So the green line is the sorted CLD, which got better accuracy than all the others. And increasing the number of topics increases, increases the accuracy up until 200 topics, and then it started uh, to falling down. 
In previous studies showed friend language are similar to each other. Here we found that such similarity is mostly from the, uh, the most sticky topics, and this is one of the main findings of this paper. Then comes the Lexeme level experiment, which is a comparison with human judgment. We sorted the topics by their CLD scores and select the top 50 and bottom 50 topics and ask human judges to pick the one that they think uh, should be stickier. And we define stickiness um, in this way. Uh, if someone reads tweet from his or her friends, which contains words uh, from that topic, those words might stick in their mind and lead them to use uh, such words in future. We got five annotators answer per question and the inter-rater agreement within these annotators were 0.71, which basically says the task was not a trivial task. We considered the majority vote as the ground truth. The accuracy of random baseline is 0.5. The average accuracy of single annotators uh, were 0.83, but the accuracy of uh, CLD coefficient was higher, uh, was 0.92, uh, which means it was doing better than average human. Uh, by the way, we did the same experiment with lexical emergence and its accuracy was only 0.6. Last validation experiment is the stability or reliability checking of the CLD coefficients. To check that we drive mm, the CLD coefficients from two separate networks, one with uh, 3000 users and another one with uh, 1000 users. The Pearson R correlation of their CLD coefficient was 0.85 and the Jacquard similarity of top 100 topics of each, of each ordering was 0.64. Comparing to random baseline, the Pearson R is zero and the Jacquard similarity is as low as 0.12. That basically says uh, by changing the network and uh, users' uh, connections, uh, we would still get similar CLD coefficients, which can be interpreted as the reliability of our method. Now let's move to the exploration experiments. First we are looking at the relation between stickiness and human personality, in particular the big five personality scores, openness, conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism or emotional stability. We assumed a linear regression where the dependent variable is the stickiness and the independent ones are the five uh, personality scores and here are their coefficients uh, normalized. What we can see from this uh, is that topics associated with emotional stability are more probable to stick in friends language. Also, characteristics of agreeableness and extraversion have less chance to spread over friends language. And finally, openness has no significant relation to stickiness. As a next exploratory experiment, here we are looking at five topics with high CLD scores and compare them to five low CLD scores topics. Topics regarding meeting and conference, government and economy, job, donation and support, and finally community services are among sticky topics. On the other hand, some of the non-sticky topics are related to some curse words, negative thinking and emotions, as well as some global events like school orientation and then we'll look at loop words category as another lexical clustering and obtain CLD score of each cluster. Loop stands for lexical inquiry and word count and define 74 categories of words with psychological relevance sorted categories by their CLD score here we can see the top 20 and bottom 20 and the values are color here are some of our findings from this table emotion categories are sticky positive emotions are more probable to spread than negative ones work is stickier than any other personal concern category like leisure and home Pronoun category has high CLD score, first person plural pronoun like we uh, are more sticky than any other form uh, like I, they. And finally, mentioning more numbers and quant categories does not spread among friends. Okay, to wrap it up, uh, we were pioneers in studying language diffusion on ordinary language through uh, frequency based models. We defined the stickiness as a new property of lexical phenomena and also presented a novel method of contrastive lexical diffusion to capture the stickiness of friendship communication. Uh, we validated our CLD coefficient through various uh, validation experiments and showed how we can use it for exploration in other areas. And also one of our main findings is that uh, similarity of friends language is mostly coming from the sticky language. 
Thank you and feel free to ask any questions.